Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And I actually did not think that I was going to film another video until I did my top 10 uh, books of 2019. But I was sitting around today, it is Christmas Eve Eve, Happy Christmas Eve Eve, and I was feeling very festive, and so I thought, I wanna do a Christmas book tag, and I just uh, searched on YouTube, Christmas book tags, and I pulled up the cozy Christmas book tag, designed, created, originated, by Call Me After Coffee, and I will link um, her original video below, and it is eight questions, and she says I'm here. I meant to make a little note in the video, I know that not everyone celebrates Christmas, but I do, which is why it's named as it is, but if you celebrate something else, feel free to tweak it and title it to fit what you love and don't forget to tag me anyway because I'd still love to watch it so I'm gonna tag her in this and all that kind of stuff I don't ever get tagged in booktube book tag videos or booktube tag videos she booktube tag booktube tag she um, tagged about 10 people in there so you can go check out her video and it's really nicely done so let's get into this oh oh I need to do my giveaway okay so I gave away in my last video um, a $25 gift card to Barnes and Noble and the winner picked by the uh, random comment generator is Project Sharky so congratulations Project Sharky Project Sharky in commenting about what is the best book that they read in 2019 said or 2019 said American Predator from our book club was he well I don't know if they read it for a book club but we read it in the book club I think August or September. Uh, American Predator was hands down the best book I've read this year. Midnight in Chernobyl uh, is a very close second. I devoured both of those books in days. So I haven't read the second one, so I may check that out and um, get that to listen to or to read. But anyway, um, so congratulations, Project Sharky. Uh, email me at peterlikesbooks at gmail.com, which is listed below, and I will get that gift card out to you as soon as possible. ASAP. Okay. So let's get into this book tag video. I'm excited. I haven't done a book tag video in a really, really long time. You ready? Okay, question number one, Twinkling Lights. What is the most beautiful book you own? Well, I immediately thought of these books. I don't know why, but they're beautiful in their story. Hilarious, endearing, but they're also beautiful just, I think, as a set and as um, just each one individually. And those are the un unlovable books, but you can't see it really, but this is all glitter right here. Uh, can you see it? If I go like that, can you see? You, you can kind of, maybe not. But these are the uh, unlovable books by es Esther, Reed Watt, Pearl Watt, Esther Pearl Watson. And they're about Tammy. I can't remember what Tammy's name. Tammy Pierce in here, okay? And Tammy's like this girl and it's kind of like the 80s, I think. And she very much is like me and my friends were in high school. There's three in the series, and she's just kind of a loser, okay? And she just, but she's not aware of it, you know what I mean? Like, like, and I was, I, I think my friends and I were kind of like that too. Like, we were such outsiders, and yet, and like, we, you know, ow, I just poked myself in the eye, <laughs> dang, damnation. Anyway, um, you know, I remember a friend of mine said one time to me when we were in like our 30s, she said, you know, we were just a bunch of freaks, and we relied on each other to get through high school, and that was the truth, we were, you know? Our differences brought us together and made us, I think the wonderful individuals that we were and so I endearingly use that word loser today because I so associate it with it and I am happy to have said that I was what other people would have termed a loser in high school you know but these books just it was it's so fantastic because she like she thinks every guy in the world wants her right when nobody wants her and so it's kind of hilarious well there's one guy there's one guy in the book that really really wants her um, but it's hilarious and they're graphic novels and they're just absolutely beautifully done inside and they're really they're really funny and like uh, <laughs> what is this one? Oh, this is when she's like applying for a job and it says and they've like her and her friend her friend that like never goes to school and they just like smoke cigarettes and she wears fishnet hose the whole time do you see fishnet hose? it's like I, these are like all of my friends in high school she's like they've like biked to it's 105 degrees it must be like 105 degrees she says I rode to Sonic on my bike Kim came along in case they gave applications for, applicants free samples because <laughs> okay so she's applying to Sonic hi is the manager here by the time we got there, I was so sweaty, she said. And then this person right here says, Hi, I'm the manager. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> you can see, like, her makeup is all runny and stuff. And she says, Wow, it's really hot today. Um, do you hire people to uh, cook, fry, or whatever? For some reason, I was afraid to ask if they were hiring, but I did anyways. <laughs> and then she said right here, I'm sorry, but we're all out of applications <laughs> looking at her. <laughs> And then she says right here, getting a job blows chunks. <laughs> she always puts these little like side net things in here. And then that's the next one. 
Um, it goes, dear God, I was just so concerned about, I was just concerned about my friend Kim. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, I noticed that she might want a different guy for a change. You know how it is. So could you give me Eric for a while? Because <laughs> she wants her friend's boyfriend. <laughs> They're just hilarious, okay? And she doesn't really get it. And I think these are just like, probably, I don't know, but some of my most beautiful books. So anyway, I mean, other than my own, my own book. Okay, number two, The Perfect Tree. Will you pay more to get the prettiest edition of a book? Never. I could care less about that. I absolutely, it's, it has, the cover means nothing to me. I know people like really like that. And I know people love signed editions and stuff like that. That just doesn't really mean a whole lot to me, you know? Three, build a snowman. Make a Christmas book stack. <laughs> well, I have like three Christmas books and they're all in the kitchen. It's a box of delights, let it snow, and I can't remember what the other one is. So here's my, there, there's my snowman. <laughs> Sorry, I know I kind of failed that miserably, but it is what it is. Okay. Crackling Fire, what book makes you feel warm and cozy? Um, okay. Well, I just recently read, and let me make sure that I say the, uh, the author correctly, her name, but I just read, uh, Murder at Mistletoe Manor, and it was this little, like, Christmas mystery book that I had never heard of. It was, like, three and a half hours on Audible. It was really, really short. I didn't expect to like it. I thought it would be incredibly cheesy, which it was, but it was, so, it was really well written. The characters were well developed, and it was, like, a good mystery. It was funny. It was kind of like Clue, the, like the movie or book Clue, or movie or, there is actually a graphic novel. I have it. I haven't read it though. Clue and then the game Clue that like takes place at this like bed and breakfast in the middle of nowhere Idaho during a blizzard and it's fantastic and it's right before Christmas. Murder at the Mistletoe Manor by Holly Tierney Bedford and it's just like it takes place at this bed and breakfast and she has like this like a uh, 20 year old or 20 year older um, like assistant that helps her and this chef named Pierre <laughs> and it's like the three of them and they're like creeping around this place and people are getting murdered left and right and it's just so fantastic and it really reminds me of like a play like in a community theater like out in the middle of nowhere and like you know I don't know like in Indiana we have Brown County which is by Bloomington where IU is and they have like the Brown County Theater down there and it's like just like this little theater that's like you know by log cabins and stuff and it reminds me of something that would play there even though it's not a play it's just fantastic it's fantastic if you're looking for a Christmas book to read and get it done in time for Christmas you literally can listen to this in one second. Stop. So um, it is Murder at Mistletoe Manor by Holly Tierney Bedford. Bedford, B E D O R D. And it's really, really good. I gave it five stars. Okay, so that book makes me feel like really cozy. And there's like fires burning, and the, each room is decorated differently. And there's like a big Christmas tree and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Number five, Knee High Socks. What is the longest book you've read? Okay, what is the longest book I've read? Ugh. Well, my goal was to read, uh, what was that? I'll tell you what felt like the longest book that I read this year was the BTK, uh, Growing Up with the BTK Killer or whatever by his daughter, Carrie Rollins. That book, I felt like I was stuck in the middle of the Grand Canyon with her. Well, if you haven't read it, okay, so, you know, if you don't know, I have a book club called uh, Peter's Book Club, but we're changing the title in January. It's an all-true crime book club that I run with my friend Mel. And um, so... Anyway, it is, we read uh, My Life with the, with the BTK Killer or something it was called. It was by his daughter, Carrie Rollins. But it was very weirdly done, I will just say, okay? And ha half of the book, I mean, like, the book has nothing to do with him being a BTK killer, really. Half of the book is all about, like, this hiking tri trip they took through the Grand Canyon, and they're literally stuck in the Grand... I mean, it just was the most boring book I've ever read. Well, maybe not ever, but, like, one of the most boring books I've read. Top five, definitely. So, anyway, that felt like the longest. The longest book I probably read in the last couple years, honest to God... Well, I thought I was going to finish Helter Skelter this year, and I didn't. And I thought I was going to finish all of the Harry Potter books, but I didn't. But I would say probably one of the, la the, the last Harry Potter books that I've read, maybe Goblet of Fire, was probably one of the longest I've read in a long time. Okay. Uh, ugly Sweaters, number six. Number six, Ugly Sweaters. What's the ugliest book you own? I don't really know that I... I don't know. Ugly book that I own? I don't know. Like, I don't really think of books as ugly or, you know, like, not. Like, I look at books and I think I don't like this cover. Like, this isn't the cover that I would use. But I don't think of, I don't know, I don't really think of it that way, if that makes sense. Um, that one book, uh, that's the poem, I can't remember what it's called by that roomy whatever. I haven't read it yet, but I haven't seen it over there. And it literally just has the title on, like, black, like, it's, like, white lettering on black print. So it's very simple. I would say that's probably one of them. But the, the milk and the honey or something, do you guys know what I'm talking about? I haven't read it yet. 
But anyway, I mean, it's just a simple cover. I wouldn't say it's ugly. So I don't know. I don't really look at books that way. Uh, number seven, Blizzards. A book set in winter or a book that gives you the chills has dark themes. Well, a book set in winter that I thought was fantastic for a blizzard would either be the one that I just talked about, um, the, the murder at Mistletoe Manor. But I also thought Let, Let It Snow what by Maureen um, Johnson, John Green, and Lauren, Lauren Miracle. I thought that was like fantastically set during a blizzard. Like I love to read blizzard books and I thought it was really, really well done. If you want to go watch my last video and I talk about the adaptation to movie, to film, or maybe it was my video before that, I didn't love that adaptation. I didn't love it because I had read the book already. And, and that's not just because like I don't love book to movie adaptations because that's not the case. I do. In fact, Kill Mockingbird, which is my favorite book, is also like I like the, the movie better than I like the book, which is crazy to think. But um, you know, like, I don't know. I just felt like they changed it up so much that it kind of ruined, like, the Blizzard was a character in the book, and the Blizzard was, like, really, I mean, they had a heavy snowfall, but there was no Blizzard. I mean, nobody was trapped because of a Blizzard, which was a huge part of the book, so I thought that was really good. Okay, and, um, or a book that gives you the chills has dark themes. Well, Blake Crouch has been my go-to, uh, author of 2019. In fact, will probably be in my top three books of this year. It will either be the Pine series or, um, Recursion. Uh, Recursion was fantastic. Probably, it will probably be in my top two or three of 2000. I have no idea. I'll go in and, like, pick out my top ten favorite books, and I never know. Last year, my favorite book was I'll Be Gone in the Dark, One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer by Michelle McNamara. Loved that book, right? I did not expect that to be my, t no, my number one book. So we'll find out when I go back through there and, and see what they are. But anything by Blake Crouch gives me chills. He is a fantastic writer. A fantastic writer of, like, spinning the, the real, like, the reality of what's going on, to, like, in our lives. He spins that with science fiction in a way that is, like, unbelievable, and I love it. Okay, uh, that was seven, eight, Home for the Holidays. For the rereaders out there, are there any books that feel like going home? Yeah, I would have said To Kill Mockingbird, but like I reread To Kill Mockingbird last November and I actually listened to the Audible version because I had never listened to it. It was by Sissy, it was with Sissy Spacek and Sissy Spacek like really did it on her and I love Sissy Spacek. She's one of my all-time favorite actresses, but she changed it up and she did it and, and I'll be honest, like, Reese Witherspoon read um, Ghost at a Watchmen, and I'm not really sure why they didn't keep the same actress to read both the Harper Lee books. I don't know. That was surprising to me. But I love Sissy Spacek, but she changed things up, and so, like, I'm so used to the movie that, like, uh, sayings that were said um, in the movie, you know, by Mary Badham, who played Scout... If you don't know who Mary Badham is, she goes around and speaks around the world now um, about To Kill Mockingbird. But she, um, the way that Scout spoke and the narrator that played Jean Louise in the original movie with Gregory Peck, the way that the sayings were said were not similar to how Sissy Spacek, Sissy Spacek, Spacek, how Spissy, Sissy Spacek read them in the book adaptation on Audible. And it really, like, I heard it in a different way. And I just didn't, I was like, I remember when I reviewed it, and I was like, this will probably be the last time that I ever read this in my life. And I do. I believe that. I think it'll be the last time that I ever read it. I don't have another... I don't have a need to read it again. My other go-to one is Catcher on the Rye, definitely. And I know that's totally trite to say, and I don't really care. Um, but I, you know, I... Last year for the book club, we read um, Franny and Zoe, and I hadn't... I read it when I was younger, but I didn't remember it. And I definitely would like to read a little bit more J.D. Salinger, maybe uh, Raise High the Roof Beams Carpenters and Seven Stories or Nine Stories and things like that. Because I, I don't remember reading those two. I know I have, but I don't remember reading them at all. So, um, yeah, those are kind of go home for me. Also, because my mother was such a huge um, uh, J.D. Salinger fan, I'd kind of like to read those again. You know, the other thing is this, is like... When I was in my early 20s, I loved reading, like, Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Gertrude Stein, um, Somerset Maugham. I mean, I really thought, like, I was this, you know, super, uh, I didn't think I was super intelligent. Super kind of individualistic, artsy, bohemian expatriate, although I lived in Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I read all those books, and I listened to, like, you know, Nina Simone, and I just really thought I was something. But I will say this. Like, those books really impacted me. Like, The Sun Also Rises, and, um, you know, uh, what? Uh, what well, one of my favorite books, actually, by Hemingway is The Garden of Eden. Was it The Garden of Eden? No. What is it? I think it was maybe The Garden of Eden, which was his very, very last... Why can't I think of the title of his very last book that he wrote that was unfinished? But it was fantastic, and very weird, and very different. But it was about a couple that um, go stay. I need to look this up now while I'm talking. Um, a couple that go and stay in like the south of France. 
Hemingway's last book. Did it pull it up? This is the old man to see, but I know that that's not. Um, his last book was considered The Dangerous Summer. Um, I thought it was Hemingway, The Garden of Eden. Is that the book that I'm talking about? We, I'm sorry to do this to you, but I just have to see. The Garden of Eden is, okay, yeah, published in 1986. What is it about? Let's see if this is it. <sighs> this is why you come to my videos for this, right? Whole, I know that this is it, plot summary. The novel is fundamentally the story of five months in the lives of David Bourne, an American writer, and his wife, Catherine. It is set mainly in the French Riviera, specifically in the Côte d'Azur, and in Spain. The story begins with her honeymoon in the uh, Camargue, then moves to Spain, then back to France at a long, at a long low, rose-colored provincial house where they have stayed before in the pines on the estral side of La, Pua, La Nupuel. I'm, I'm mispronouncing these things. Anyway, however, early in the book, Catherine seems to change from David's point of view. Okay, it is fantastic. It is one of my all-time favorite books of life. So I'm thinking maybe in 2020 to go back and read some of those books that meant so much in my youth and trying to figure out why did they mean so much? How did they form me into being who I am today? And would they have the same impact on me today? The thing is, is that Tinder is a Night is a Fitzgerald book that I was trying to think of. And, um... The Moon and Sixpence by um, Somerset Mont. They're very depressing books. They're very sad, you know? And I think they were authors that led very sad lives and drank a lot, you know? And, um, you know, we know that Zelda Fitzgerald had tons of mental health issues and, you know, Ernest Hemingway drank, you know, tons. So these were people that weren't without their own issues. And so I think that for them, writing was a cathartic process. And I look back on that and, and that was what I so ad identified with that, that, point in my life before I was sober. I mean, I remember reading some of those books drinking, you know, drinking like the things that they would, you know, drink in the book. So interesting looking back on that. So yeah. Okay. Well, that's the, that got kind of weird at the end of the <laughs> cozy Christmas book tag, didn't it? Anyway, so I will tag, uh, I will uh, put at the bottom of this, uh, the original tag, call me after coffee. Thank you for uh, making this original book tag. And um, that was really fun. So anyway, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Project Sharky, do not forget to contact me for your gift card. Love you guys and I will see you then.